Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen, and I thank you for listening today. As always, go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Go snag your 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. Uh, Fantastic study guide, refresher, uh, whether you're in school or practicing um, out in the real world. Um, Definitely a, a great resource to have where... Uh, I poured a little time into it and um, tried to highlight some of the most uh, highly testable things as far as board exams go, uh, as well as um, some of the most relevant things that actually occur in in clinical practice. So uh, go snag snag that for free simply for subscribing uh, at reallifepharmacology.com. All right, so let's get into the drug of the day today, and that is Glyburide. Uh, Brand name is Dibeta. And this is an anti-diabetic agent, um, more specifically a sulfonylurea. So if you remember back to the glipizide episode, uh, this drug is, is in the same class, glyburide is in the same class, So, um, which can be a potential uh, error, which I have seen glyburide and glipizide uh, get mixed up because they do sound alike, they look alike, um, their dosing is... Um, in the range of each other as well, uh, and they are both sulfonylureas, which stimulate uh, that release of insulin. Uh, dosing, you know, I've seen 1.25 milligrams, you know, up to in the neighborhood of 15 to 20 milligrams a day. Uh, it is a drug that I, I don't see uh, very often anymore. And there, there's a few reasons for that, and we'll we'll kind of get into it. But um, anyway, as a class as a whole, sulfonylureas have um, definitely gotten less and less popular um, due to their facts of hypoglycemia, um, as well as weight gain. So a couple negatives there are going for them. But um, some of the newer class agents um, have better cardiovascular outcomes, less hypoglycemia risk, less weight gain, and, and so. So Fonyurias, um, Glyburide have definitely kind of fallen down the list. So uh, as I was saying, I don't see many new starts for this medication. Um, typically, the patient that I'm going to see that's on Glyburide uh, has probably been on it for years and years and years, and you know their A1C is you know okay, or maybe at goal at seven or whatever the patient's goal is. So. Um, yeah, why isn't this med used? I mentioned hypoglycemia risk. And particularly, uh, it can cause really prolonged hypoglycemia, and particularly in the patient population that I work with mostly, and that's geriatric patients. Um, there's some active metabolites and things like that that can kind of hang around, um, especially as we get older. Our body doesn't clear things as quickly typically. And um, so that can ultimately lead to more drug activity for a longer period of time. And if we run into a hypoglycemia situation, obviously that can uh, prolong it and um, obviously make that an issue. Uh, Administration, uh, generally recommended to uh, do with meals and uh, consistently. Uh, I have seen twice daily dosing with gliburide. Um, Oftentimes it's just dose once a day. Uh, usually if it's going to be split up, usually it's because we're getting to, um, higher and higher doses, of course, there, uh, adverse effect profile. So certainly the hypoglycemia, the weight gain, uh, there is a rare potential for self across reactivity. Um, you know, if a patient has a, a true, you know, sulfa allergy to a sulfa antibiotic, that cross reactivity risk is actually pretty low, at least according to, to some of the, the literature there. Um, here again, the odds that you're going to want to start a sulfonylurea, um, and particularly glyburide in a, in a patient, is going to be uh, pretty, pretty low. Um, you're likely going to probably encounter patients that are already on it um, versus wanting to start it in a, in a new patient. But should the occasion arise that you need to start it, um, definitely, if you see that sulfa allergy, you probably should at least stop and think um, and assess what that allergy was in the past um, and what drug and or drugs that allergy was uh, occurring from. 
and then go from there with kind of your clinical assessment and, and judgment. Obviously, if it wasn't a true allergy, it was, you know, stomach upset or whatever, that's probably not going to be uh, an issue uh, in starting a, a drug like glyburide. Uh, so I mentioned uh, the kinetics a little bit. I alluded to it. So there are active metabolites. Uh, this drug is on the beers list. So that's, again, drugs to avoid uh, in the elderly. And those active metabolites can hang around, linger, and, and obviously um, uh, cause issues as far as hypoglycemia. Poor renal function can also potentially uh, play a role as it is cleared some um, by the, the kidney there as well. All right, so let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material like NAPLEX, BCPS, ambulatory care, geriatrics, MTM, or the uh, psychiatry uh, certification, definitely go check out meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. In addition, if you're a nurse, nurse practitioner, med student, or other healthcare professional that needs to learn about pharmacology, uh, got lots of different resources available on Amazon and Audible books, case studies, drug interactions, uh, all sorts of, of different stuff there. So um, lots of uh, goodies, and, and all those links are at meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. All right, finishing up on drug interactions. So uh, first, uh, glyburide is partly um, broken down by CYP2C9, uh, so, you know, a relatively, you know, potent uh, 2C9 inhibitor like fluconazole can potentially raise concentrations of glyburide. Uh, another thing to think about is adding on other blood sugar lowering medications. So if we've got, uh, if we're adding a, a diabetic agent, you know, on to glyburide, you know, we're going to potentially run into uh, further lowering of that blood sugar, which is expected, but it may have an exacerbated effect uh, if we're taking a sulfonylurea like glyburide already. Uh, rifampin, enzyme inducer, um, may actually lower concentrations of a drug like glyburide. Um, and then, of course, we got to think about drugs that potentially raise blood sugar too, that may kind of counteract the effects of glyburide. So, a classic example um, being corticosteroids there. And then one last unique one that that I can't say I've seen it come up in clinical practice, but I have seen it reported anyway. Um, alcohol, uh, doing alcohol with glyburide, uh, there have been reported disulfiram reactions. Um, so that might be something um, uh, to, re to really caution your, your patients on or at least um, give them a, a little bit of heads up. Uh, to, to pay attention with, with any alcohol consumption with this medication. Um, but again, uh, the, I think the evidence on that is kind of a little bit sketchy. Um, but again, there have been uh, reports in the, the literature from that as well. So, all right, I think that's going to wrap it up for today. If you enjoyed this uh, podcast episode or the podcast in general, leave a rating review on iTunes or whatever your platform you're listening uh, go support the sponsor, meded101.com slash store. Uh, any purchases there uh, directly help uh, keep this podcast supported and going, of course, because we want to uh, try to educate as many uh, future healthcare professionals uh, and active healthcare professionals as we, we possibly can there. Uh, questions, comments for me, you can reach out, Eric Christensen, uh, PharmD, BCGP, BCPS on LinkedIn, uh, or you can track me down at mededucation101 at gmail.com. All right, I'm going to sign off for today. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, have a great rest of your day.